Hey, what's up guys, Bobo Real here, and today I've got my first impressions of Vigor's update 12.0 Absolution. So this update was one of the most revolutionary in Vigor's history. Massive changes were made to Elim, lots of weapon balance changes, as well as many little tweaks in other places all have come together for a pretty solid day one experience. Now of course nothing is perfect, and there are a few problems that we'll get into in a second, but I'll just go down the list of what I feel has impacted the gameplay the most overall. So let's start by talking about encounters and how they feel in general. I played for about 5 hours total in the last day or so, and I gotta say I was surprised by a few things. First off, not as many people have caught on to the MG changes as I would have expected at first, because their frequency is still pretty low in each encounter, but I imagine in the coming days slash weeks, more people will catch on and they'll become more and more prevalent until we reach a spike point. But if you haven't gotten the chance to use them yourself, you're probably wondering how they feel when used in an encounter. For the most part, the changes feel really good. On some guns, I feel they went too far and made them overpowered, but most of them still feel relatively fair considering how much they weigh. All of them feel pretty different than they used to, but also are considerably more effective at almost every range. So yeah, I predict them taking over the meta in the coming weeks, but only time will tell if they'll become spammed to oblivion and become as big a problem as previously outstanding metas. Also, something I've noticed in encounters is much more balanced distribution in the loot POIs, and a general shift in the loot pool overall. Things like Rafikas, PPSHs, and other mixed guns that I haven't seen in the safe before are now spawning, and that should help add to the variety of this season. So now let's talk about what changed the most, and of course that is Elim. With the removal of random weapons and the switch to selectable loadouts, there are definitive pros and cons to this new system. First, it allows us to have a bit more of a choice in terms of what we get to use, but typically, the problem I see here is 2 out of 5 loadouts are just not even close to the other 3, leading to a strong disproportionate balancing between the classes. And because of this, 2 teammates end up being a lot less useful to the team, while the others who had faster thumbs in the select screen not only have better, faster TTK weapons, but also a wider range of stronger consumables. This just feels a little half-baked in my opinion, and if someone has a worse gun, it would make more sense for them to have a stronger consumable like grenades or armor to even it out. Also on that note, grenades and armor feel fine in that mode, but mortar strikes should probably be removed, as I find most of the time they're just used to spam the enemy spawn or the objective area at the start and end of the match, and that's not even mentioning the frame drops that they cause because of the size of the map. I think that with the size of the maps, the mortars are just too strong to be fair, and the easiest way to fix that is to just remove them. They don't add that much to the gameplay flow, and like I said, people just end up spamming them in random places instead of using them for any tactics tactical purpose. So I think that balancing is definitely the biggest consideration that needs to be looked at with these loadouts, um, but let's talk about the actual gameplay on the new Fisk maps. I've played all three of them, and each of them feel good, but are definitively more close quarters focused than the ones on Anakin. Spawn peaking, if anything, is a bit more of a problem here, and some spawns definitely feel like their push lanes have less cover and or are at a slight disadvantage to the other team. That being said, it's overall just really refreshing and nice to play on a new set of maps, and my only real complaint about the way they play right now is the lag, which I've just chopped up to poor server performance due to the first day overload. Now let's talk about their rewards though, because this is a bit crazy. The winning team will almost always get high level crates, especially if they do well and even those who did nothing for their team will get the same rewards as the top of the leaderboard. So winning is all that really matters in order to get good rewards and this is definitely going to cause what me and Chris would call quote unquote economic inflation. Since Elim is so popular and people are going to get an extraordinary amount of gold crates, there's going to be a massive increase in the accessibility of gold and purple guns as a result of this. Now, whether that will be reflected in the weapon frequency, I'm unsure of, but it is now much easier and much more sustainable to use, say, a bugle or any other purple or gold gun every single round. Since you're going to be getting 10 of them from winning one Elim round, people's overall stockpiles of gold and purple guns are going to increase, especially if they save their gold crates acquired through Elim and open them in larger chunks. 
But yeah, so I think we'll probably be seeing much more high tier guns in the loot pool from everyone, which is interesting to say the least, and I'm curious how much this inflation will change the overall gameplay experience. So now down to the last mode, Shootout has had some life put back into it by throwing some MGs into its loot pool. This really is the best way to test out a wide variety of these new weapon changes and see the new power they have against some real players. Server stability wise, I was actually pleasantly surprised as frame rate felt a lot more stable than elims, but there are still a few pretty hefty and completely random micro stutters that still hinder the experience a good bit. We'll see if that keeps happening in the coming weeks as servers level out and players start to fall off a bit, removing that overload, but for now, pretty much every mode is completely playable with a few little hiccups here and there because of that. Finally, let's talk about some small things. First, in my 5 hours of playtime, I saw not a single radnade being used. This new consumable is crazy rare, not having any accessibility from the battle pass until level 50. And even once they hit that, I still think it's going to be some small numbers, considering I haven't seen them spawn in any unboosted POIs, or even gold crates for that matter. So yeah, I apologize I can't really speak on them at all, because they are damn near impossible to find. Finally, the last bit I wanted to talk about is the overhaul to the challenges, which increased the variety of them and balanced some existing ones to now give us a limit of 5 of them instead of the original 3. Also, something weird about this is that it wants me to redo the Your First Airdrop quest line, but it's pretty irrelevant and a bit of free XP, so it's chillin'. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my first impressions of the update. In general, this feels like a big step forward with a lot of changes, even though some of them definitely feel under-tested slash half-baked. In some ways, I think Elim still needs the most work, and there will definitely need to be some adjusting to the MG's balancing, because some of them are just too strong as a result of this. Still, this makes a pretty solid experience, so if you haven't tried it out yet, I would highly recommend jumping in, giving the new machine guns a spin, and finding out what guns are best for you. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. This has been Bobo Rail here from the Christopher Beast channel, and I'll catch you all in the next one.